Greetings, everyone, and welcome to part 60 of The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. The time has come for us to at last confront the hijacker of plots, Ganondorf. Oh boy, let's see how are we going to face him this time around. something interesting. Yes, Ganondorf has taken control of Zelda's body and is now controlling her like a puppet. The body, at least. And what's this here? Uh, the body is tossing energy balls at Link? Surely we have never seen anything like this before, have we? They brought this concept back. Basically, it's another round of tennis with Ganondorf. And, uh, and I still get hit. Although I can probably give this game an excuse. Well, for one, this is the first stage of the final boss, so it's gotta be a little easy. And two, if you really think about it, this is the first time that this Ganondorf has utilized the technique. So, um, yeah, remember, uh, Ocarina of Time and Wind Waker did it already. So, uh, yeah, split timelines and all that stuff. So, yeah. 
Anyway, the only way to damage Puppet Zelda is to use those energy balls and hit it right back at, um, her, him, uh, the body. Yeah, I'm going to call it the body because, um, it's essentially a male consciousness inside a female body. And that is weird. Ah. Anyway, Puppet Zelda has also uh, two more attacks besides the energy ball tennis thingy. First of all, there's that diving technique that you saw earlier, and what the body will do is it will summon a big old triangle, and it's easily dodge. You can easily dodge it, no problem. So yeah, and I do have to say I like this music here when you face off against Puppet Zelda. I mean, it's a nice dark reprise of the familiar Zelda theme, plus the fact that there are some uh, Ganon themes into it. I mean, it makes sense, really. Anyway, if you look closely at the cutscene before the fight begins, you know, when Minna um, tries to confront the body, you can see the actual transformation take place. I mean, I didn't notice it until uh, I uh, watched this footage in preparation for my commentary, so... I've just uh, rewind this back to an earlier spot, and you can actually see the transformation, so uh, I thought that was pretty cool. And of course, like always, it takes three hits to bring this sucker down. And with that, we did it. We have defeated Puppet Zelda. Stage one of the final fight is done. Ganondorf is recombining himself into something monstrous. Whoa, very monstrous indeed. Ooh. Yes, this is our second battle right here. Dark Beast Ganon. So yeah, what he'll do is he'll come charging straight towards you and you can either dodge it, shoot him with an arrow at his, at his forehead or, well, take the hit because um, he will come at you hard. See? Ugh. And he'll also destroy the pillars in the area. Why? Because um, he's a beast. He's a mindless beast. Now, anyway, in order to uh, damage him, look for the portals and watch the one that turns blue. By doing so, um, hit him with an arrow, and while he is stunned, just attack him. Use jump slash four at maximum damage. Alright, so why did he transform into a uh, Ganon now? You know, the usual Ganon thing? Ooh! Well, before I get to that, be mindful that he can also drop straight from the ceiling from right above you for a death from above kind of feel. Because, uh, well, he's a beast that way, you know? He's a mindless beast, he wants to kill you, kill you so, yeah. Anyway... As I was saying, uh, before he became good old, uh, the reason he became Ganon now is, uh, well, let's just say that the second part of this fight will bring up the answer. I mean, the past 3D games have already had a menacing Zelda, uh, I mean, Ganon. You know, Ocarina of Time did the best with this whole uh, Twin Sword Ganon thing, but, um, yeah. Okay, but, and, uh, Wind Waker did the next best thing, I mean, with that whole puppet cannon thing, so, um, it makes sense to try something a little different from when, uh, Ganon transforms into a monstrous, uh, pig form, because technically this is actually a boar, and boars are related to the pig family, so, um, yeah, I'm just saying. Come on, where are you, you stupid... There you go. Ah! 
Oh, I can't shoot him anymore with an arrow. No, 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 no. That means it's time to change strategy. Now it's beast versus beast. So what we have to do now is essentially stand our ground. Wait until the portal turns blue, stand our ground, and Midna will grab a Ganon by the head and toss him aside. And that will stun him long enough for Wolfling to take a chomp out of his weak spot, that big old white crack in his belly. Yeah, that white crack in his belly, that's uh, where the sages stabbed him a long time ago. If you remember that cutscene, that is. So yeah, that scar has never fully healed. Thank God for Link. So, yeah. Now, um, as you see me get thrashed here about before I get my act together, I do like to point out that um, that whole concept with uh, Puppet Zelda and later the main villain turning into a beast, those plots were recycled for Spirit Tracks. Now, in that game, uh, a demonic force steals Princess Zelda's body so that it can release a monster into the that, that can release a monster into that body, and once the uh, puppets, uh, z once Zelda gets her body back, the force inside the body mutates into a, uh, well, combines with a, another person, mutates into a, essentially a, uh, giant monster thing, like we're seeing right here, so, yeah, uh, just not point it out. And as you can see here, uh, Ganon is getting more relentless and whatnot, so yeah. And I have a feeling that this will be the last time you will see, uh, well, well, spoilers, this will be the last time we see Wolf Mode because, um, yeah, you'll see why, um, in a bit. So, yeah, they gotta get Wolf Link into the final battle somehow, so, um, I'm guessing this is the only way to do it, you know? Beast versus Beast. And with that, Ganon is, uh, defeated. And we have ended stage two of the final fight.
Minna, oh. Well, it's time to adventure in phase three of the fight. Basically, it's horseback combat, and what we need to do is we need to gallop close enough to Ganon and L target him. By doing so, Zelda will shoot light arrows at him to stun him, allowing Link to slash him with a sword. Now, Ganon will try and slash Link with the sword to knock him off his horse, and Ganon will also try to summon Phantom Riders to damage Link and knock him off the horse, and for some reason, Zelda will stay put. Again, remember, L target Ganon at all times so that Zelda can shoot at him. Yeah, it only works if you L target, just to keep that in mind. And overall, this, uh, next, this phase here is not too bad, really. And that's it for phase three. Pretty short, isn't it? All right, folks. In the next part, we will finish this once and for all. See you then.